Rupert Hook, your parents were from what is formerly known as East Pakistan. You grew up in London in the 70s and 80s. Did you experience racism? I grew up in Ealing, which is the seat I now represent. Um, and yeah, where my parents came from is present day Bangladesh. Uh, it was, I think it was British India, India, East Pakistan, Bangladesh. My grandmother used to say that she'd lived in about four different countries without moving house once. But yeah, of course, uh, if you're my age, yeah, you got called Paki, those kind of things. Um, I mean, I think the first time I was called it was probably 1977 or thereabouts, the very start of my school career. And I corrected the kid who said it and I said, no, it's Bangladesh. It's been <coughs> independent for six years now. Get with it. And that sort of startled the kid who just called me Paki because I'd corrected them on their geography. Did it hurt? I mean, I guess... Um, the very first time it was a bit surprising and shocking and then after a while you sort of, I don't know, internalise it and bat it off in the same way that in our job, you know, on our timelines we get rubbish every day. I don't massively advertise mine. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was hurtful. And, and again, my parents always said to me that you've got to be that bit better. I mean, I remember even the first time I stood in a general election uh, Tom Watson, your old boss, came to knock for me and I said I'm worried about my dodgy name because every time in a three ward council seat you get the ethnic person and the other two Anglo-Saxons, the ethnic name always does worse everywhere and I said that name huck against my Anglo-Saxon competitors and he said you've just got to be that bit better. When did you decide you were Labour? Do you know, I think it was Neil Kinnock. Uh, my parents were always Labour and I think that's a uh, you know, people say immigrants have a loyalty to war or, you know, or at worst blindly vote Labour. But I think it was Neil Kinnock and his rousing speeches every time in defeat. If the Tories win on Thursday, I warn you not to be sick and not to be old and not to be poor. So that kind of stirred something in me watching uh, on the sofa in Ealing. And he was actually just down the road because uh, he was always there. Uh, back in the day, the policeman outside the door after another defeat and someone had thrown an egg at the window or whatever. So I think it was Neil Kinnock um, and his Welsh rhetoric that did it for me. So I've got to ask you, your sister is Connie Hook, the TV presenter. What is it like growing up with a famous sister? Well, I mean, she wasn't famous at the time, but she was always a bit of a cheeky thing. So, I mean, growing up, it was a weird existence because it was... I mean, for example, we always, our parents spoke to each other in Bengali and to us in Bengali. We always answered back in English. Every party knew what the other was saying. There's nothing I would ever say or Connie would say or my older sister that would surprise them or vice versa because their language had kind of stunted in the 60s when they came over so they weren't learning new phrases or anything. Um, but yeah, she was, she's three years younger than me so she got away with murder basically. Uh, so immigrant family, one of three, oldest one wasn't allowed to go out of London for university, very mollycoddled. Me, branched out a bit more, had a Saturday job in WH Smiths. That was a bit of a fight to be allowed to do that. Connie had Saturday jobs in central London, meeting famous people. And then when she was in the sixth form, she blagged it at an audition um, for a satellite kids channel. I went as the grown up with her. Uh, she got the job and next week she was interviewing Take That and who else? Tasmin Archer, who was number one at the time, mm -hmm. sort of all the stars of yesteryear. And she was still a sixth form. She was given a pager. This is before mobile phones. So it used to bleep when she's in double chemistry and say, <laughs> come and interview whoever it was. And she would be off on the tube from Ealing. And the school was quite understanding towards her. So I think the school got more understanding uh, because also she applied for Oxbridge without a fight, whereas I had to really convince them that I could do this. And my parents got easier, because with my older sister, you know, she wasn't... I don't know, lots of stuff they protected her from, whereas they got more lax with me and with Connie. Yeah, got away with murder, that one. Oh, did you ever... I mean, she had a pretty cool job. You, were you ever jealous? Um, I mean, by then, yeah, we'd gone slightly different directions. But yeah, she did mad stuff like, I don't know, scaling the tallest building. A lot of international travel they did, uh, including one that was Connie goes back to her ancestral roots in Bangladesh. 
um, and um, yeah, entourage and all these sort of people. And my late grandmother, who was already octogenarian by then, um, actually my parent, my dad was nearly 80 when he died, but yeah, God, I may be mixing up the numbers. Anyway, this is a while ago. Um, she appears in shot and says in Bengali, Connie, what are you doing here? Who are these freaks? Kind of thing. And then Connie's mask literally said, oh, Nani, which is what we call our grandmother. And yeah, that was the last time I saw my grandmother. And my parents used to make everyone who came to the house watch that VHS. And I think it sort of wore out because it had so many outings. But yeah, she had a pretty cool job. And I used to sometimes come with her to stuff. So I remember um, we went to see Corner Shop. They were number one at the time as well, with Brimful of Usher. We went to the South Bank and I think she had blagged the tickets. And I went with her, but I'd also known them because I used to do a lot of music journalism. And, and I, um, yeah, I always had a huge record collection. I used to play out a bit on Did the you? side as well. Really? Yeah. And my DJ name was Dr. Huck and I have a PhD. So not like Dr. Dre or Dr. Fox. Who are these people? They have no PhD. I genuinely was Dr. Huck on the deck. So I remember we went uh, to Corner Shop together and I was talking to John Peel, whose programme I'd been on. Because at the time, he used to sometimes have um, like people in the background. Again, that could be a long story if I start telling it. But I'd been on his show and recorded a jingle in Bengali. And so I was talking to John Peel, and she's like, you're so embarrassing. That guy's really cool. Why are you talking to him? Because she didn't know about this other side. Because I think while she'd been at uni, I'd been developing the, the Dr. Huck persona a bit and stuff. Gosh, tell me about so, Dr. Huck, not the PhD one, but the, um, the, DJ. the DJ Dr. Huck. <laughs> Yeah, no, I used to... Um, How stuff. old were you? When did you start doing so this it? this is kind of in my 20s, yeah. Um, yeah, in... Actually, in Manchester, my leaflets say I've never left Ealing. There is a small interlude <laughs> when I was in Manchester for, for work purposes as a, as a postgraduate. Um, so, yeah, so the things I had that no-one else had was Asian Underground, because uh, there were... As I say, Corner Shop, Talvin Singh won the Mercury Music Prize that year. I used to a bit hang out with him. Uh, and French hip hop, because I did a student year in France. Um, so I had a big vinyl collection of French hip hop. And also my mum's sort of Bengali things. You could mash them up with vinyl sort of jungle things. And I've still got two turntables at home and a mixer. I when mean, was the last time you used your turntables and mixer, Rupa? Do you know, I, yeah, I mean, I don't do as much as I should, but my whole home is configured around my deck, so I had to move house to fit the vinyl and bikes in, to be honest, yeah. The, new, the current place has got side access for all the bikes in our house. So, yeah, I'm a voracious vinyl collector. I don't replenish as much since motherhood has hit, but, um, yeah, sometimes I do like to get them out. And uh, my victory party, yeah. That's when I tend to have played every time, which is three now, that I've won an election. We've had a party in a club in Acton and uh, Dr. Huck has been <laughs> queuing up, the, pushing up the fader and everything. Yeah, so, I mean, look, hey, it's an odd year, isn't it? I'm kind of due an election because I've had three. It's been every other year for me, hasn't it? 15, 17, 19. If there is one by the end of the year, I'm sure. Funerals, bar mitzvahs, I'm available. So I was reading... <clears throat> When you were um, a postgraduate at Strasbourg University, you also worked at the European Parliament for the Labour Party. You were sexually harassed by a male MEP at this time. Yeah, I have to say, this is something I kind of had forgotten about until the whole Pestminster thing broke a couple of years ago. And then I did some interviews and they said, has it ever happened to you? And then, you know, you sort of park these things and they... And I thought... Gosh, yes, it has. I used to work for Carol Tung, MEP. That was the, the Tung job. Um, and I do remember that every year there was a trip with these uh, MEPs and their wives, I think, to an apple scrumping thing, orchard in Strasbourg and cider and the menu very apple themed. I think that's what it was. And on the way back in the minibus, I suddenly felt someone's hands kind of going up my skirt and this was a then sitting member of the European Parliament. How old were you? And I was 22, three, something like that and I slapped him quickly. I was startled because you don't expect that. It's also like, yeah. And uh, 
yeah, just was a bit shocked because it was dark by then. This is the trip back in yes. the minibus with all the... And I think I'd blagged in as someone's... I think someone had said they were... I think I'd blagged in as Madame Terry Wynne. It wasn't Terry Wynne. He was an MEP at the time. I think people had taken other people's places yes. at this trip. Like sometimes I used to blag in as Connie Huck to... Yes. I think I saw Kylie once <laughs> under that <laughs> disguise uh, with my mum. I think I was Connie Huck. Kylie, uh, my mum was plus one on that occasion. But anyway, yeah, no, it was a bit startling and shocking. And I told my uh, then chap, uh, and yeah, who said, you know, a bit like Johnny Rotten on the famous uh, Bill Grundy show, the dirty effing rotter. And, um, but I mean, in those days, it was sort of, yeah, yeah. As I say, I forgot about that until it re-emerged and someone's put it on my Wikipedia. Right. Do you think politics is a place where sex pests, sexual harassers, call them whatever you, you think um, appropriate? Do you think it's common? Do you think it's any more common in Westminster than it is in any other walk of life? I mean, look, I think there's a lot of... I mean, first of all, I do remember when I did do a couple of interviews where this came out in 2018 or 17 or something like that. Yeah, the, when you put this on your social media, people are saying, that ugly old crone, really? Did the bloke need his eyes tested? Which, I mean, again, that says something, doesn't it, about what we put out there and how we are perceived now. This was however many years later. However, uh, is Westminster a hotbed of all this? Um, I mean, I think, you know, alcoholism, a lot of these things, um, uh, sexual misconduct could easily present themselves. I mean, nowadays I do my vote and I'm off. I've got childcare encumbrances and all that. So I'm not massively, and also I am a member of parliament now, but I can see that you have these huge imbalances of power so you have very powerful people who've made it, and then you have very young, desperate, 20-something, our assistants, they're all very you know, well-meaning, good-hearted people that want to work for us. But in the same way, they're maybe on the climb as well, so they could be taken advantage of by someone with lax morals. So I can sort of see, and also you get a lot of maybe men away from home. Again, as a London MP, I sleep in my own bed every night. But you can get these people that, I don't know, Monday to Thursday or whatever, um, they're away from temptation, away from family, away from normal life. So I could see it happening, and I know it does happen. And it shouldn't, and it's wrong, and it should be called out. And abuse more generally? Commonplace? Bullying. I mean, the whole place thrives on it. The whole culture of the whips, the fact that we have to count out you know there is a sort of food chain um so yeah the sort of fact that people can i don't know they have power over you even when you are an mp they can deny you being on committees going on trips that kind of thing so yeah i think i mean again this sounds very off-putting uh, to anyone wanting to get in and it's changing and it should be better and it will change and come forward and do put yourself up for election because it's not going to change until those people speaking out. Because it's a bit of a weird culture. I mean, I came in late in life. I was 43 when I was elected. I had a long career in academia behind me. Um, so I do know what a normal workplace is like. Whereas if you've been there from age 20 as someone's assistant and then you became an MP, it's maybe a bit unhealthy. We had an election in 2015 where every party leader including dear old Ed Miliband, who I really like. But, you know, him, Cameron Clegg, they'd just been backroom boys turned leader, which, you know, it's maybe not great for the old churn of the different uh, professions. I've heard it said that sometimes you need a good old war, because, not that I advocate war, but then, you know, people have experienced all walks of life and blah, 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 and I don't know. At the moment, maybe it's a bit stuck in a groove. Okay. Final question. Who do you reckon's happier? Connie Hook, the TV star. Wife of or, Charlie Brooker. <laughs> wife of Charlie Brooker. Uh, or 
Rupa Hook, Member of Parliament for Ely. No, it's not a competition. <laughs> Come on, it's not a competition. Um, I have the best job in the world because I represent my home community. Seriously, these are people who taught me that first election. I remember, um, yeah, teachers, people like that, us knocking on their door, like, hang on, isn't it you from Double Maths or whatever? Um, so it is an amazing honour and privilege. Uh, you know, all my old neighbours, a woman, Auntie Marjorie, I went to her 90th, that was two years ago. She's just a woman from up the road, the house we grew up in, she taught me the piano. Uh, she used to, my mum used to leave us with her when she was learning how to drive. Okay. Like, you know, I'm Mon Auntie Marjorie's MP and I've taken her for lunch on the terrace. Do you reckon Connie would swap her life with yours? Uh, I mean, she's, she's a lot richer and better looking, put it that way. So you can't have it all. <laughs> oh, it's been, it's been um, a really varied discussion. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you we'll for miss you. Come back, Gloria. <laughs> all is forgiven. Uh, not on your life. But I'm glad that, that you are happy and all of you are happy and stay safe. Thanks. <laughs>